Okay, I'm excited. I want to talk to you a little bit about one of my favorite early Christian documents outside of the New Testament. It's called the Didache, which means the teaching, and it is basically the earliest church handbook from ancient Christianity. So this is a document that was very important in the early church. It was sort of like a minister's handbook that uh, gives instructions about things like how to do baptisms, um, the types of prayers to pray uh, when you take the Eucharist on Sunday mornings, uh, basic sort of instruction for uh, new Christians who are about to be baptized, um, that kind of thing. So it's really an interesting little window into the earliest Christianity, what, what that looked like, sort of boots on the ground. Um, so I just wanted to mention a little bit about it. Um, I think it's worth a read, and you can actually find it for free online. I'll post a link below. But uh, yeah, the Didache, the teaching of the apostles. Um, it, it's quite possibly the earliest Christian document that we have outside of the New Testament. Um, some scholars think it may have even been written in like the 70s AD. Um, so even when parts of the New Testament were still being written, um, others think maybe it was a little bit later than that, you know, closer to 100 AD. But uh, this is a very, very early, um, a very early writing. And so it's very, very important for our understanding of early Christianity and sort of really how they practiced. There's not a lot of theological content to it. It's very practical focused. Um, again, it's basically a, a uh, sort of a church handbook uh, for church discipline and instruction. It's sort of like the earliest catechism as well, the earliest instruction uh, for new converts. And what's really cool is it starts out with the, the first uh, six chapters are really moral instruction, moral instruction. It talks about how Christians ought to live. And so this is, uh, most scholars say that this part of the book is basically instructions that were given to new converts uh, before they could be baptized. They needed to learn this. Um, and so it's kind of cool that in the early church, the, um, the emphasis before you became a Christian was learning how to live like a Christian. Not just how to think like a Christian or what sort of doctrines to believe in, but here's what we do, here's what we don't do. Uh, we do pursue holiness. We follow the Ten Commandments. We, you know, live for God. Um, we do not, you know, commit sexual sin or abortion or idolatry or, you know, greed or things like that. So um, really what, what was sort of definitive in terms of entering the church at that stage in the game was, are you going to live like a Christian? Um, which is really interesting. Uh, it's not... It's not very similar to how we do things typically nowadays in a lot of churches, right? Where it's, hey, do you sign off on all these doctrines? Do you do you believe all these things? And I'm sure, of course, that based on you know a, a lot of other evidence we have uh, about early the early church, there was, of course, an expectation that people needed to believe in Christ as Lord. Um, but at least for the Didache. Uh, apparently, when it was being written, the the big question was, are you actually going to live this out? Um, so there's not a whole lot of reflection in it, but it's really practical. It's really nitty gritty. Um, something that's really interesting about it in chapter two, it actually lists abortion and infanticide among some of the sins that Christians are not to practice. Um, a little culturally relevant there, I think. Um, but of course, uh, uh, infanticide was very common in the Roman empire. Unfortunately, one of the ways that Christianity grew was that churches would take in babies that were abandoned. Um, that were left out to die and raised them as Christians. And so that was kind of a cool little thing. Um, in fact, there was a Roman author, I can't remember who it was off the top of my head, um, who basically was talking about how, uh, man, you know, these these Christians, uh, they take better care of us than, than the Roman government does. You know, they take care of, of even the people who aren't Christian. Um, they're putting us to shame. And so it's kind of interesting to see that emphasis on righteous living. Um, there's some statements in the Didache about um, judging justly and not being, not playing favorites with the wealthy, but making sure that the poor are treated well. Um, so that's interesting. Some statements about generosity. I like this quote. It says uh, in Didache 1 verse 6, let your gift sweat in your hands until you know to whom to give it. I really like that line. I think that's really pretty. Um, let your gift sweat in your hands until you know to whom to give it. In other words, always be generous. Uh, be looking for opportunities to be generous. Um, that's really good. Um, and so after the moral instructions in the Didache, you also have instructions um, 
about baptism, how to do baptisms. It's kind of interesting because we have a lot of debates, right, about, okay, do you need to dunk them underwater or is just sprinkling okay? And in the Didache, apparently this is like the earliest practical question in the church outside of the New Testament is like, okay, how do we baptize? And it gives instructions about that. It's like, hey, uh, you ought to try and baptize them in fresh water. So if you've got a river nearby, go to the river. Um, if, you, if you don't have running water nearby, then you can, you can wash them, you can sprinkle them, that's fine. Um, basically, it's just kind of practical. It's like, hey, whatever you can do, it's fine. Just make sure you baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you know, the way Jesus instructed. <laughs> um, and it also instructs to fast a couple of days before baptisms. Um, there's a really interesting line in here about not fasting on the same days the Jews do, but fasting on Wednesday and Friday. They fast on Tuesday and or on Monday and Thursday, so we're going to fast on Wednesday and Friday. <laughs> Uh, but it, that, that's kind of the uh, the earliest stage of Christianity sort of separating from Judaism. Uh, the Didache also contains instructions about the Eucharist or the Lord's Supper. It's um, one of the earliest places in which uh, it's called the Eucharist, which means Thanksgiving. And uh, so there, there are set prayers that the church is to pray during the Eucharist. So it's kind of uh, really early evidence of liturgical worship. Um, or there's formal prayers and sort of an expectation of order and, uh, uh, and a very specific way to worship, uh, which is interesting to me. Uh, and there's also some information about traveling prophets. So this is a very, very, a very early document, and early in the history of the church. They've still got uh, traveling prophets ministering to different churches, and it talks about uh, who you should support and who you should not listen to. You know, if they want to stay more than two or three days, don't listen to them. If they if they ask you for money, they're not a true prophet. <laughs> um, so that's again just more of that practical nature of this document. And at the very end of the Didache, it actually concludes with a little summary of what the early church believed about the end times. Uh, it, there's a little section in here called the Mini Apocalypse. And it just kind of summarizes, you know, what early Christians expected to happen. You know, pretty soon there's going to be a tribulation. There's uh, the deceiver of the world is going to appear and pretend to be the Messiah. Many people are going to fall away and perish, but those who endure in their faith will be saved. Um, and then Christ will return. There'll be the sound of the trumpet and he'll gather all of his uh, believers, the resurrection of the dead. Interesting. The earliest Christian document outside of the New Testament actually places the rapture after the tribulation interesting idea there um, that might throw some people for a loop um, but apparently the the earliest the earliest teaching outside of the New Testament is that uh, Jesus will you know gather his elect after the tribulation which actually lines up with a lot of the same stuff we see in the New Testament anyway so I'm not gonna make too big of a deal out of that soapbox but uh, it's just something to ponder uh, another thing that's very clear is Whoever wrote the Didache obviously did not believe in once saved, always saved um, also. It says in 16 verse 2, uh, the author says, Gather together frequently, seeking the things that benefit your souls, for all the time you have believed will be of no use to you if you are not found perfect in the last time. Uh, so yeah, all the time you've spent actually believing in Jesus will be of no benefit if you don't endure in your faith in Jesus. Uh, so apparently, uh, whoever wrote the Didache thinks true believers can fall away. Uh, just, again, very interesting little glimpse of uh, some of the early church uh, faith and practice. Uh, I think it's worth a read. You should check it out. Um, you know, whether you find it uh, helpful or whether it ruffles your feathers, I think it's still worth wrestling with. It's really a cool little document. Um, nice little window into the early church and sort of the things that were really the most pressing practical concerns for them. In terms of okay, how do we how do we live out this Christian faith? Um, yeah, it, it it's cool. Uh, so yeah, that's all I have to say about the Didache. Check it out. Let me know what you think. If you like this, be sure and subscribe. I'll hopefully uh, have some more videos about some other ancient church documents coming up soon. And I'll see you guys later.